The inspiration for the rotary engine was derived from the geometric principle that when a circle is rolled on its own circumference along another circle that has double the radius, a point within the circle generates a curve known as an epitrochoid. This curve forms the shape of the inner walls of the rotor housing. The rotor housing hosts all stages of the rotary's power stroke, much like a cylinder in a conventional engine. As for the shape of the rotor, a triangle was ideal because it yielded the most effective configuration within the housing. As the three apexes of the triangular shaped rotor move uniformly along the inside walls of the rotor housing, the cavity between the rotor and the interior walls of the housing is divided into three continually changing areas of volume. This is because rotary engines are variable volume progressing cavity systems. Each rotor has three faces, and each face has three cavities of volume per housing. In effect, each face of the rotor sweeps its own volume as the rotor moves in an eccentric orbit within its housing. Each side of the rotor is brought closer to, and then further away, from the wall of the internal housing, compressing and expanding the combustion chamber. A rotor is effectively akin to a piston, but where the cylinder volume changes as the piston travels up and down in a cylinder, the volume configuration and position of the operating cavity changes as the rotor orbits in an eccentric fashion. Now that we have a better understanding of the inspiration and mechanics of a rotary engine, let's dive into its first introduction, what apexials are, and their evolution. Starting in the early 1960s, Mazda had released a slew of models like the Cosmo, RX-3, and three generations of the Mazda RX-7. But what truly made these cars unique was the Wankel rotary engines under their hoods. Early developments and research into what later became Mazda's iconic 13B REW engine derived from a joint study contract between Mazda and German car firm NSU. At the time, NSU was spearheading research and development efforts to bring the first Wankel-powered automobile to the market. NSU was eventually successful with the release of the NSU Spider, which came equipped with a water-cooled single rotor engine and standard front disc brakes, which differentiated from other cars of a similar type of the period. Succeeding the NSU Spider was the Row 80, which was believed to be ahead of its time though it would be quirky by modern standards. It was even fitted with a warning buzzer to alert the driver that the 9000 RPM redline was approaching. Despite the praise, the Row 80 developed an early reputation for unreliability. Its ultimate failure came from the engine's premature lifespan, generous warranty policy, and tarnished image, eventually bankrupting the firm. Early cars required an engine rebuild only after 50,000 kilometers or 31,000 miles. Many of these failures were attributed to poorly designed apex seal tips, a common weak point later realized in rotary engines. Before we proceed, let's understand what apex seals are. In order to keep compression in the chamber, the three tips of the rotor must form airtight seals against the inner walls of the rotor housing. This is accomplished by seals at the three apexes of the triangle, known as apex seals. These seals are usually made of metal and are pushed against the wall housing by springs. Since the seals are in contact with the housing's inner case, in order to reduce friction, they are usually covered in engine oil. Thus, by design, a rotary engine burns engine oil, which is pumped by a throttle control meter pump. Because of this direct contact, the biggest obstacle engineers faced was the chatter marks on the rotor housing sliding surfaces. Frictional vibrations of the apex seals caused this issue and were dubbed devil's nail marks. Further contributing to the issue was inadequate lubrication of the rotor housing, the natural frequency of the seal elements, and the coefficients of static and kinetic friction. This placed a great demand on the materials used to construct apex seals. Mazda's initial approach was through using ceramics, but later, their first breakthrough was achieved by using cross-hollow, cast-iron apex seals. This design had two longitudinal and several cross-perpendicular holes that assisted in reducing high-frequency vibrations. 
The use of this design was later extinguished because of the complexity and high manufacturing costs. From 1967 to 1973, Mazda employed the use of a 6mm or 0.24 inch thick aluminum impregnated carbon apex seals, which were developed from a joint venture between Mazda and Nihon Carbon, utilizing Nihon's pyrographite high strength carbon compound. To an extent, this carbon version was self lubricating, which offered relief in the issue facing the rotor housing wall surface. Additionally, these seals were used in conjunction with an aluminum rotor housing, in which the walls were chrome-plated. From 1973 to 1975, a cast iron apex seal replaced the carbon compound design previously used. This new design also saw a 3mm or 0.12 inch reduction in thickness. What made this possible was the new pinpoint porous chrome plating on the interior walls of the rotor housing. This provided the lubrication between the apex seal and the rotor housing contact surfaces. The tip of the seal that made direct contact with the housing was crystallized in the form of carbides. This process is known as electron beam chill hardening, which gives the seal tip a ceramic-like composition. Electron beam hardening is a material hardening process that uses an organized column of electrons as an energy source. The bombardment of the electron column on the material surface creates heat. The increase in temperature rises until the material or the surface of the material reaches temperatures at which hardness is increased. This allows the material to have superior surface wear resistance. This new process opened the way for a new two-piece seal design, further optimizing the gas sealing performance. From 1975 to 1980, it was discovered that the current apex seal design was subjected to high thermal and centrifugal loads during high engine RPM ranges. To rectify this issue, Mazda implemented a slight crown of 0.05 mm or 0.002 inches at the highest center section of the seal. This additional crowning compensated for the rotor housing slight deformation under high loads, ensuring sufficient contact with the rotor housing walls under operation. Mazda also improved the corner pieces by incorporating a spring design to keep the clearance of the rotor groove at a minimum, dramatically improving gas sealing over the solid springs used on the previous version. By the early to mid 80s, Mazda adopted a top cut design that extended the main seal. The purpose was to reduce gas leakages at one end of the apex seal, where it would segment into two pieces. From 1985 all the way to 2002, the apex seal had been further reduced in size to 2 mm or 0.08 inches. A new three-piece configuration had replaced the two-piece design used previously. Changes also included a division of the main seal, both laterally and at an angle. Now there would be an upper and lower section, while still retaining the triangular end portions. The new top section slides vertically up and down on the lateral and angle contact surfaces on the lower section thus promoting tighter gas sealing. Additionally, Mazda filled the center cavity of the spring corners with a heat-resistant rubber epoxy, adding additional sealing properties. The last version was used in Mazda's 13B REW until the engine was finally dropped from production and replaced with the Renesis engine, which used its own apex seal design. The apex seal in the Renesis engine was now a two-piece design made from cast iron and low carbon content. This version retained the 2mm thickness used in the previous generation, but the height was reduced to 4.5mm versus the 3 pieces top pieces 4.8mm. This version was crowned and the tips were rounded to better follow the rotor housing sliding surfaces up to the 9000 RPM redline. Additionally, the spring corner seals contact surface was chrome plated and a cast iron plug replaced the elastic filler piece since the new seal is now exposed to the hot exhaust port area.